Hi friends, welcome to the channel. In this video, we will see week 9, assignment 9, questions and answers with explanation for the NPTEL course, Introduction to Database Systems. The due date for this assignment is March 29th, 2023. So let's get into the video. The first question is, if the read-write head of a disk has just read a block on surface 20 of cylinder 2, then accessing which one of the following blocks as the next block requires the least amount of time compared to others. So actually, the disk head is currently positioned at cylinder 2 and surface 20. So the next block which requires the less amount of time to access would be cylinder 2, surface 22 and uh, sector 10 because the head is already in cylinder 2. So it would be requiring less amount of time for the head to move to the uh, next immediate surface 22 and sector 10 on the same cylinder. So if you consider the other options, it would require the head to move to a different cylinder or uh, to a different surface which requires uh, which uh, so which would require more time because uh, we have to move to the uh, next cylinder and then we have to move to the corresponding sector so among the remaining options accessing cylinder one surface 20 sector 20 would be the next fastest uh, access time since because it is on the same surface with, in which the head is currently positioned so the right answer to this would be Option A, cylinder 2, surface 22, sector 10. The next question is, suppose F is the file containing the first level of a secondary index built on a non-ordering key field for a data file. The blocking factor F is independent of which of the following. So here, if you see, the blocking factor F, which is nothing but your uh, uh, number of entries which can fit in a block of F. It is independent of the, if you take the fourth option, it is actually independent of the length of the record pointer. The use of record pointer is it is used to locate the actual data record in the data file. And it is usually present in the leaf, stored on the leaf nodes of a secondary index. Uh, so if you take the block factor, blocking factor of F, it depends on the block size and the length of the index entries, which is composed of your non-ordering key field and the block pointer. So the use of block pointer is it is used to locate the next level of index or it is used to locate the actual data record in the data file, depending on whether your index is a single level index or a multi-level index. So here, if you take the blocking factor, the formula would be blocking factor is equal to block size divided by record size, where uh, you will take the length of the, now if it is a secondary index, you will take the length of the non-ordering key field plus length of the block pointer for tracking your record size. So the the field which is independent is the length of your record pointer blocking factor is independent of length of the record pointer the next question is consider a disk with the following characteristics block size b is 512 bytes interblock gap size is 64 bytes number of blocks per track is 20 number of tracks per surface is 400 a disk pack consists of 15 double sized disks what is the total size of a track and what is its useful capacity? So here, the total size of a track, excluding interblock gaps, is given by number of blocks per track into block size plus interblock gap size. So the number of blocks per track is 20 into block size is 512 plus interblock gap size is 64. 512 plus 64, you would be getting 576. 576 into 20, you would be getting 11,520 bytes. So the total track size would be 11,520 bytes. And they have asked the useful capacity of the track, which is nothing but the number of blocks per track into block size is your formula. So the number of blocks per track is 20, and which is actually given in the question. And the block size is 512. So 512 into 20 would be 10,240 bytes. So your right answer to this question would be option C. Total track size is equal to 11,520 bytes and useful capacity is 10 to 40 bytes. Fourth question is, suppose the disk drive rotates the disk pack at a speed of 2,400 revolutions per minute. What is the transfer rate in bytes per millisecond? So the transfer rate formula is Total track size divided by time for one disk revolution. Time for one disk revolution, they have already given us 2,400. So the to uh, total track size we have just now calculated in question number three, which is 11,520. 
So 11,520 divided by, so they have given 2,400 revolutions per minute, but they have asked the transfer rate in millisecond. So you have, you'd be converting for time for one disk revolution would be 60 into 1,000 divided by 2,400. So you'd be getting the, that as 25. So 11,520 divided by 25 would be 460. So the answer would be D, 460 bytes per millisecond. We'll see the continuation in the next video. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.